Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Designs. I am back with Slow Down and Let God Love You. We are on day four of our project. Sorry, let me get my phone out of the way. <laughs> it's got messages blinking on and off and calls and all that good stuff. So anyways, but I am super excited. This is such a good day's lesson. Now, let's pray and then we'll go back. And I wanted to share some stuff that I said I would come back with for um, yesterday's lesson. So, um, alrighty. I'm going to put it like that so it won't flop. Dear Lord, we just bow before you, Lord. We pray today as we study your word that we will understand what it is to truly know when and there are the times to rest and the times to get busy. God, um, you are such an awesome God. You meet us where we are. You show us what we need to know, and you guide our steps. And if we just go to your word, God, we can better understand your plan and design in our lives. As I read through today's devotional and I prayed through it and thought about it, God, I think I've learned so much today. I wish I would have known this better uh, maybe two, three years ago, but I am thankful now to better understand the process so I can help encourage others. And God forbid, you know, Lord, that anybody else that close would pass away. Lord, this gives me perspective on what I need to do. And um, just thank you, God. Thank you for the timing of this devotional. Thank you for the timing of us going through your word together. And we just pray that today everything that is said, thought, seen would just give glory to your name. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, friends. So, what a good devotional today. Oi, oi vey. Those of you who know my history, you're going to say, yeah, it was. Okay, so yesterday we talked about um, the fear of the Lord and then faith. And I said, well, hey, why don't you look up that definition for faith? So, I have here the, you know, just the online dictionary, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. That's pretty basic. Complete trust or confidence in someone or something. That's really basic. But if we go to scripture, it just gets a little bit richer. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1 1. In order to be a believer of the Lord... To believe that Jesus was Messiah, that he died, he's resurrected, that he was resurrected three days later, and he lives eternally in heaven with God, and that there is a God, we have to understand that scripture. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So those are the things that we hope for because of what God has taught us in his word. And the evidence of things not seen. I can't see Jesus. I can't be Thomas and put my hand in the holes of Jesus' hands. Was it Thomas? Yeah, I think it was Thomas. Anyways, but I can't do that. I can't even meet Paul and let him, like, get me straight. <laughs> Tell me about his journey. Tell me about the truths of God. I have to know that the, that the message they left us God's holy word is exactly what he needed us to know and to learn and to guide us through in our lives. And I also have to have faith that when I pray to him, that he hears me and he answers me. That when I step out in faith, that he guides me. All of those things. So that, my friends, is what faith is. I know it's kind of simplistic and pretty short, and we could spend days talking on faith. That one concept alone is worthy of days of discussion, but we got to get to today's devotional, so I'm going to hop back in. All right, so day four, and we're in the slow down devotional, it says, and he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while, Mark 6, 31. We've all had it happen. Life hits us out of nowhere, and we find ourselves knocked down and breathless. Yes. Uh, in Mark 6, 31, um, John the Baptist has been beheaded and they have just returned from preaching. This is a group of people. John's death hit very close to home for everyone. Some of the disciples were John the Baptist originally and John was Jesus' close relative. John wasn't simply a notable prophet to them. Many of them knew John personally. But here 
they were preaching and teaching with people clamoring for their attention. What were they to do? How could they take time to grieve? How could they get everything done? And Jesus said, Come away by yourselves and rest a while. Come away with me. It's a song. Come away, let my grief, let, let me grieve with you alone. Come away from his, this noise so we can share our sorrows. How often does Jesus tenderly whisper to this to our hearts and we push it to the side because we are too busy? Well, you know where I'm going. I've spent years now being too busy. Uh, nobody else will do it. i got to get it done. It's got to be done. I, I, I guess I have to do it. When my daddy died, I've shared this many times, I, didn't, I wouldn't let myself cry because I didn't want my mom to be sad. She had Alzheimer's, and I knew that she reflected the people around her. So if I was happy, she'd be happy. If I was joyful, she'd be joyful. If, she, if I was sad, she would be sad. And I knew that I had to press on. I had to press on to the goal, and the goal was to take care of my mom and give her a good life for the rest of her life. Now, I in no way knew that was less than five months, but I am thankful that, because I knew if I started crying, I couldn't stop. My daddy and I were super close, and my mom and I had become so close over the years. <clears throat> she was one of my best friends, and of course my dad was, and... um all I can say is, I remember the day she died. I you know, had some tears, but not a lot, because I had to take care of things at the nursing facility. I had to take care of the arrangements for my mom's funeral. I had to take care of my children that were traveling. I had to take care of you know, my siblings and make sure they were all okay, and my nieces and nephews. And then I had to call all the family, and I knew I had all these things I had to do. And then we had to get everything ready for the funeral, and I had to get that done. And then we had to do, you know, X, Y, Z. And one of the things that I walked away with, I remember there was this gentleman that we worked with at my dad's funeral, my mom's. Very, very sweet man. And he asked me something because I wanted something to be just perfect for my mom's funeral. And he looked at me and said, who's going to notice that? I said, what? He goes, nobody's going to notice that. Nobody's going to see that. And I was like, you're right. I, I, I have to let this go. Okay. Okay. And I got in my car and I cried not about what we were going through, but about this, this job I had been doing for so long to make sure my parents were okay, that they were healthy, they were happy, they were taken care of, that, 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 that. life is so busy. It is so busy, my friends. And I look back at that season of my life, and I know God was using me. I know God was instrumental in my life. I know God was amazingly working through my life and working in my heart. It was such a difficult time. And then for about a little over a year later, until, I don't know, April, May, maybe by, I don't know, fall, I think it was August, I finally realized, where's my life? My life has turned into everybody else's demands and needs, and what am I doing? We get so busy. We get so busy. How can we be serving our God and understand His priorities for our life if all we're doing is swimming upstream, trying to fix everything for everybody all the time, doing it, getting it done, got to focus the day after my mom's funeral. The day after, I've shared this before, I woke up, I was the last one to go to sleep, I was exhausted, I hadn't slept for days, well, you know, we were at the end of her life, I hadn't slept for days, and um, I'd stayed up with her all night, you know, as she was going to be with the Lord, I had then stayed up for days getting everything ready, and I was exhausted, I mean, the kind of exhaustion where it so physically hurt just to lift my arm, or lift my head, or open my eyes. I remember going to sleep, last one to sleep, first one awake, and I couldn't stop crying. It was so huge. It was like the dam had broken, 
and the river was flowing. And I mourned my daddy. I mourned my mom. I was... I just couldn't stop crying. After an hour or so, I called my sister. It was an hour or two, and I finally said, I can't stop crying. I can't stop. And my family was still asleep. I excused myself out of the room to not make noise, to not wake anybody up. And I called my sister. And I sat at my desk chair, and I just... We talked and you know bless her heart because she she cried all the time and you know I'm really the crier all the time or but um I just could not even get air I was breathless and I thought if I can't breathe I'm gonna die what's wrong with me <laughs> do you ever feel like that <laughs> and I recognized I needed to get away for two hours and just mourn then I could go through the next step of the process of going through this incredibly arduous journey of taking over these different roles and completing these incredibly difficult tasks. And there were naughty people along the way, people who took, a, who took terrible advantage. I mean, we're getting ready to have to bring an attorney in, took terrible advantage of some things that happened. And I don't believe in bringing in attorneys. I've reached out endlessly and you know what I reached out to a friend of ours who was an attorney and he said sweetie there is nothing else you can do you have done it all and I had to just say but uh, and he was like you need to hear me sweetie you just I can't help you you're gonna have to find somebody local and you're gonna have to deal with this and he was a hundred percent right and you know it was like I have to let this go. I mean, I've given it to God. God can do it, you know, <laughs> and he can. But this person is living a very naughty life. And, you know, I have to on behalf of many, because I'm responsible and caring for many people. And um, I owe my, these people, a job well done. And he said, this is the only thing. You know, he was so good about saying, this is the only thing you can do. When we're in this battle, and sometimes it's a battle. Life is a battle, my friend. Sometimes the sadness overwhelms us. It overtakes us. The things that are happening, we have to get away. So by this fall, we did. We left. We went to New England. It was so hard for me. In the end of my parents' life, if I left town, if I left the state, they were in the hospital in an emergency or something major happened. It got to the point where my sister would make comments like, you must hate to leave now because as soon as you cross the line, something's going to happen. And it was like, yeah, that just kind of feeds that, <laughs> that concern, you know. And she didn't mean, you know, she didn't mean anything by it, but it was already something I was battling with. And knowing full well that could be the result. But to leave, even after they were had passed away, been buried, it was like I felt guilty if I wasn't working 60, 80 hours a week. And there were weeks I worked easily that. It was two full-time jobs. It was two full-time jobs. And my immediate family, some did not understand that at all. Matter of fact, were infuriated. And finally, you know, my husband had to step in and say, you've been working full-time. I said, I've been working more than full time. And he was like, and you're right. You're right. One call could take 10 hours. That's more than a day's worth of work. And that wouldn't be the one thing I was doing that day. So you, you really have this journey that you're on. And then you get to this place and you think, oh, and you know what? I was wrong. I planned the trip and we went on it, but it was not my respite. I know. It was my first steps in breaking away. It was God's ability to show me, hey, while you've been like trudging through everything, everybody else went on and traveled and had lives and they went on and did all these things and, you know, have these great memories with their kids while you were just caught in the sludge of life. And you know what? Are you going to hear me now? Are you going to get that priority straight? Are you going to listen to me? And Jesus said, come away with me. Come away with me, and I will give you rest. 
And that journey for me was getting back in His Word every day. It was journaling every day. It was writing scripture every day. It was going and smelling the ocean air this Christmas. It was rolling down my window and knowing I could smell the salt air. It was seeing the water for the first time and becoming like a giddy child. So much that my daughter and, and daughter, youngest daughter and daughter-in-law laughed at me. It, it's that. It's that. It's when the first wildflowers come and I open my window and I see the blue bonnets and it's like they're here, they're here. I am that excited. And you know when we get away with God and we have that sweet fellowship with Him, that is our joy. That is our rest. And so this year when I pick my word for this year, my word, as some of you already know, is joy. And it is the priority of Jesus, others, and you. And you know what? I know some of you are going to argue and say, but you put you way down the list. You might need to bump it up. And yes, there's some things I have to attend to this year. But you know what I did? I put myself on the list this year. I put myself on the list. I kept trying to put myself on the list and I didn't. I didn't. And my body is a temple of God and I haven't taken care of it. And this year, it's all about that. What are you doing this year? Let's continue on. And by the way, this was by Amanda Schinkenberg? Schinkenberger. Great name. Love that. It doesn't matter what's going on or what, what's prompting Jesus to say, come away with me. What is important, what is important is that you, you, my dear, sweet friend, as you hear my voice, respond. That you turn to him and you hear him in your life. An overwhelmed heart will cause you more grief than taking the time to get away with him. Please ask me how I know. Yeah, I just shared with you how I know. I don't know Amanda, but I'm going to tell you how I, I know. And there is joy in the journey when we start turning towards him. Take Today, take a quiet moment and ask Jesus, do I need to come away with you and rest a while? Next weekend, I am going to one uh, conference on Saturday, and I may go to one on Sunday, though I will come back and share one with you on Sunday. I am not, I've taken some time that I have never taken <laughs> with a big N-E-V-E-R, and I actually stayed through some of the Cory the Reset Girls online um, vision boarding, decluttering, things like that. Wow, guys. I mean, you can be doing other things, but it's so encouraging. Are we doing these things? Are we nourishing our hearts? Are we feeding our souls? She has a new conference coming up called Harmony. I'm praying through whether I'm to take that or not because I know there's so many other things I have to get done this year for God um, that I feel like he's called me to do. So when you come back um, January 12th, I'm going to walk you through the creation of my vision board and I've been working on how I'm going to do that and you know I plan and then I'm going to change it but as I implement it because that's how God works in our lives but um, I do invite you I'm not doing an, a vision board I'm doing a, a, a vision book and I've shared this several other times that that book is very God affirming. I have always done a project management book for my home and projects that I'm doing and Bible studies and you know things for my family etc. And then I decided I'm going to add pictures this year and that's going to be my vision book. And I was praying about what book to use and I had some spare journals but I wanted it to be big and I didn't know if I wanted to use one of my big expensive dilution books which is what Corey used. And I found this darling book for nine bucks. I think it was nine dollars at Walmart. It's a pen and gear journal and it's a dot grid. It just floats my boat. So this is what I'm going to do. And I might just keep it for years and years and maybe the next ten years of vision, vision uh, plans will be in here. Won't that be neat? So anyways, but let's keep going. So do I need to come away with you and rest a while? I think God's going to answer you quickly if you're anything like me. <laughs> He's going to say, where you been? I've been here waiting on you. <laughs> Even if the tiniest whisper in your heart says yes, 
then make plans for it to happen. Get away with Jesus and rest a while. I say that again. Get away with Jesus and rest a while. Whew. Wow. Gotta have faith to rest with Jesus. I know. I know. Okay, let's pray. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to have a part two, and I'm going to share my Bible journaling with you again. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Please let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate your feedback. Or you're welcome to email me. And that's listed below in the information section. So, um, and so many of you email me private prayer requests. Please always email me that privately or message me privately, direct message me. So, um, yeah. Okay, friends. Let's pray. Oh, dear Lord, thank you so much for the, what you're teaching us. God, we thank you for Amanda, who had this in her shop, and we thank you for, I believe it's Amanda, Amanda Schlesing, Schleckenberger, for what she wrote. We pray that you would bless both of them, God. Thank you, God, for everything that you're doing, everything that you're teaching us, God. Help us to serve you better, Lord. Help us to know what it is that you are calling us to in our lives. Help us to seek you for rest. Jesus, we ask you with a humble, humble heart to guide our steps, to draw us closer to you, and help us to hear you whisper, Yes, come be with me today. Yes, hear my voice. I know, God, that you whisper quietly sometimes to me, and I have to be still to hear your voice. Help me to hear your voice. Help everybody within my froggy throat voice that they would hear your voice today in their hearts, that they would seek you and you would make your you would reveal yourself and make known to them your will in their lives. Lord, we give this to you. We give this time to you. We give this study to you. We give this channel to you. We give all the subscribers to you. We give those who come and visit to you. And we ask, God, that they would seek you and love you and know you in their lives. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, friends, I'm going to let you go. And if you want to come back and do a little journaling with me, bring your Bible journal, bring your journal journal, or bring a blank piece of paper. And let's hop in and let's journal what today's scripture meant to us in our lives. All right, my friends, I love you. I pray your day is blessed, created and creative and lovely if you're not coming back. I mean, you know, to everybody, but especially those who aren't coming back. And I will see you tomorrow. Love you. Bye.